Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube? Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. So the news has been broken. Josina Anderson yesterday said that Joe Judge will be back as head coach. But it seems like that was not the right, the right report. Seems like that was a little bit premature. And today, the Giants official Twitter, I forgot if it was Ian Rappaport or Adam Schefter. I'm pretty sure it was Rappaport that tweeted this out. But anyway, it doesn't matter which one of them tweeted it out because the official Giants account has tweeted this out. And Joe Judge has been relieved of his duties. He was 10 and 22 or 10 and 23 as a head coach. He was the first Giants coach to go to lose 13 games in a single season. He was the first Giants coach to lose, I think, six consecutive games by 10 or more points in the franchise's history. These are two firsts, and they are not two good firsts <laughs> at all. Um, you look at his first season, six and 10 where it was a lot of promise in that second half of the season, and then everything pretty much collapsed. But there was an official statement released by John Mara. Uh, Steve and I both believe that it is in the best interest of our franchise to move in another direction, said John Mara. We met with Joe yesterday afternoon to discuss the state of the team. I met again with Joe this afternoon, and it was during this conversation I informed Joe of our decision. We appreciate Joe's efforts on behalf of the organization. Now, that's a pretty cookie cutter statement, but it just essentially says they're moving on from Joe Judge, and that's that's how it's going. I, I'm I'm really surprised by this because it's showing a little bit of growth from John Mayer. I didn't expect these sorts of moves. I thought he would have to bump his head uh, one more time to figure this out, but it seems like he's starting to see that he has to wipe things completely clear, bring in a guy at GM, let him select the coach that he wants, let them, you know, start this thing together and build this franchise together instead of, I think they brought in, they brought in Shermer, they brought in Gettleman and Gettleman pretty much had to deal with Joe Judge. It, it's just always a revolving door. And this time we're bringing in a GM, we're bringing in an offensive, not an offensive coordinator, we're bringing in a head coach and they're going to build this together. So I'm definitely excited about that. Uh, I think where Joe Judge really went wrong is Daniel Jones and, the, and this offense. But specifically, they invested that first round pick, six overall in Daniel Jones. The first year, Daniel Jones is 24 and 12. Now, he did have a ton of fumbles, but that's just a rookie thing. He had a ton of fumbles. He seems like he's corrected the turnover part, but overwhelmingly, the touchdowns, the production has been down. It's, it's been awful to watch the Giants offense as a whole. And I know everybody wanted to say Jason Garrett, Jason Garrett, Jason Garrett, the offense, the, the, the design, the route concepts. I hate it, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that. But at the same time, you have to use your brain. Joe Judge is not the offensive coordinator. Joe Judge is not the defensive coordinator. Joe Judge is not the special teams coordinator. He did not call plays on either one of those things. So do you really think that Joe Judge just shows up to the games? Or do you think that he has his hands in all three aspects of the game? And I'll give him credit for some of the defense. I'll give him credit for, you know, some of the special teams. I'll give him, but he has his hands in all three aspects of the game. So to say that it's not the offense isn't his fault, it's kind of not telling the whole story. Because as soon as he got here, I mean historically low production for Daniel Jones. So I'm glad that we seem to be moving in a different direction here. I think that Joe Judge really broke Daniel Jones. I think after all of those turnovers, maybe Mara, you know, was pushing him to do this. But after all those turnovers, Joe Judge was focused on making sure that Daniel Jones didn't make any mistakes. He made sure that this entire team could make no mistakes. One drop, one holding penalty, uh, one whatever could change the outcome of the entire game because this team takes no risk. We don't go for it on fourth and shorts and on the opposing team's 41-yard line. We don't kick the long field goal there. We don't go for it, you know, we don't go for it on the goal line as much. It, there's, there's just a ton of times where we don't take those big chances. We don't throw the ball down the field enough. We don't try to make huge chunk splash plays. We don't try to do that enough. 
And I know a lot of people say the offensive line, yes, but it doesn't take much to throw the ball down the field. It doesn't take that much time to throw the ball down the field. I know there's this narrative that you have to hold the ball for five seconds to throw it down the field, but you don't. And there were a ton of times that Daniel Jones had great protection. Not that he always did, but there's a ton of times he had great protection and there was just nobody running downfield. And it's it's shot plays are designed. A lot of shot plays are designed where you're the first player you're looking at is the shot down the field and that deep route isn't just there to clear out things to throw something underneath that that i mean was was it was a mess to me and i really i really feel like i have to put a lot of that on joe judge because jason garrett's offense was never this bad jason garrett at his worst yes it was a horrible offense at some times the des bryant came out and said it was bad cowboys fans talked about how they didn't like the offense and the play calling but his offense has never been this bad. And you have to put some of that blame on Joe Judge. Um, th- that's really where he lost it. That's really where he lost it. Another thing he said was that his team was going to compete for 60 minutes. I do believe that the team did compete most of the time for 60 minutes, but they weren't competitive for 60 minutes. I do think they tried. I do think Joe Judge has all of the intangibles, the leadership, the ability to build culture, the ability to hold players accountable, the ability to 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 make people believe in what he's saying. But it doesn't matter how much you get people to believe in you if you're leading them into oblivion. If you don't know what you're doing and you can just lead people, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how well you can lead if you don't know how to coach if you don't know how to manage the game if you don't know how to install a game plan the right way it doesn't matter how great of a leader you are and i just hope for his future that he can get those x's and o's and games management down some more so in the future if he gets another job he'll be a great coach because he can really lead people he can really get grown men to to believe in what he's saying and i really believe that he was great at that but the thing is that's pretty much all all he did it's like if we brought in a motivational speaker to, to be our head coach, seems like we get the same result. So he he's he's got to improve on that, and I'm sure that's going to be his first his first thing that he'll work on wherever he goes. That's what he's going to be trying to develop. But another thing he did, he said, "We're going to use players to their strengths. Don't tell me what players can't do. Tell me what they can do." That was the biggest lie there. Kenny Galladay sat here for you know two or three days in this organization. Uh, as a free agent, we did not use Kenny Galladay where he was supposed to be used. We did not design a. Sh- when you have a receiver that's that great at at really going down the field and making those contested catches, you have got to get him involved very early on in the game. Have him running those streaks. Have just throw him the ball down the field. Doesn't matter if he's covered. Just throw it to him early on every game because that's the type of player he is. If Kenny Galladay is going down the field catching forty five. 50-something yard passes early on in the game, he's activated for the rest of that game. Those slants are going to be easier. Those posts are going to be easier. Those in routes are going to be easier. The out routes are going to be easier. The back shoulders are going to start to come open because he's locked in. But when you really tell Kenny Galladay to just line up and run routes and try to create separation, which was never his strength, contested catches were always his strength. But when you just tell him to just not do what he's done his entire career and why you decide to pay the man $17 million a year, you're not going to get the result that you want if you don't use what you brought in to the team the right way. And we, and we did not use him the right way. Uh, Leonard Williams, first half of his season, he was being used as a 4-3 defensive end. Way too much. Why do you think he wasn't getting pressure? Why do you think that, you know, why do you think he wasn't being being the same Leonard Williams that he was before. He got pretty much a half a season robbed from him. He still got five and a half sacks, but he could have been used so much better, so much more efficiently than he was used. And and then the second half of the season, he started to have a little bit better games back on the inside. And that's where he should have been the whole time. I understand they're trying to stop the run from going on to the outside, but Leonard Williams is not being most effectively used there. Jabril Peppers was so great playing where he was as that extra linebacker in the box. And we decided to just move Jabril Peppers out of that this year for whatever reason. It, it's it just, we did not use players the way they were supposed to be used. Golden Tate was is one of the all-time great yak guys. Not that he's a Hall of Famer, not that he's just some great player, but he was really one of the all-time great yak guys as far as yak yardage every year, yak average, one of the best. We did not throw him many screens. 
we, we didn't we, we didn't get him the ball in space. We didn't get Kadarius Tony the ball in the space uh, enough. We didn't get Saquon the ball in space until he got injured. We, we didn't give him space until he wasn't the same guy. And we didn't use him in the slot. We didn't use him outside and let him run routes down the field, like vertical routes down the field, which is something he can do. We didn't use Evan Ingram down the seam. We didn't use him on drag routes. A ton, a ton of guys were just used the wrong way. And it was frustrating to watch every single game. Kyle Rudolph, yes, he's older. Yes, he's not the same player, but he was not used as a red zone target. Don't He was not used as what he was brought in here to be. We did not throw him more than one, one fade route in the end zone the entire season. We literally threw him one, and Daniel Jones just overthrew him, didn't give him a shot to, to catch the ball. That might be partially on Daniel Jones, but we did not use Kyle Rudolph to his strength his entire this entire season. We 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 misuse both of our tight ends. We misuse both of our, we misuse Saquon. We misuse our top two receivers. The only guy we use right was Sterling Shepard and he's pretty much scheme you, you can use him any in any scheme. You can use him in any role. So looking at all of these things, all of these players that were misused, it just really shows why we had to move on because everything that he said in his conference None of that came true. He said, we will not beat ourselves. Guess what? Holding penalty every time we get near the red zone. Offsides, um, illegal contact. I mean, every kind of penalty you could think of. Every kind of drop pass that you could think of. And people who say, Joe Judge can't get on there and, and make them not commit penalties. Yes, he can. But at the same time, you see a lot of coach teams, a lot of well-coached teams not make these mistakes. And when they start to make these mistakes over and over and over and over again in critical situations, you need to make sure that you're altering something and doing something different. And he could not get that under control. And that lost us way too many games over the last two years where we're approaching the red zone and we have a holding call. We're approaching the red zone and you have a drop on a third and 10. It's just the entire team did not have that mentality of being able to make the plays that are there. How many dropped interceptions did we have? And I understand people are going to watch this and say he can't make these plays for him, which I 100% agree. But when it becomes a trend across the entire team, you've got something that you really have to look into. So I could go on and on. Uh, Joe Shine is the GM candidate that we've been looking at interviewing. And I think that he's the front runner the assistant GM to the Bills, and I think that he's going to probably look to bring Brian Dable here with him, and I think that's why Joe Judge was let go. I think he was let go because the candidates that were interested in at GM were not interested in working with Joe Judge. That double sneak probably was a nail in the coffin for them, but Joe Shine looking, in, looking to bring in uh, Brian Dable, I'm thinking that's the plan here. There's a ton of uh, vacant head coaches, a, a lot of good head coaches that are out on the market right now, even Mike Zimmer. Not my, not the top of my list, but there are a ton of great coaches that are available. I don't think we'll have an issue getting a good coach and a good GM, and we'll move on from there. But I'm going to have formal videos on possible GMs, on possible head coaches. You guys let me know what you think of this move by the Giants, and who are you targeting a head coach? And do you think that Joe just should have gotten another year or do you think that this is about when this should have happened? You guys have a great rest of your day. You made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.